Thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title, we are talking today about Celine Spring Summer 2024. As per usual, Celine doesn't like to be on the schedule. It's like almost a month later, but here we are. Better late than never. This collection was shot at the National Library in Paris. It's right across from the Celine headquarters. And Celine has been posting these collections at these Parisian, very famous French landmarks. Recently, they were doing nightclubs and then there was one in LA but they're really here to set the tone, set the mood. It's a part of the story, the branding, the vibes. This used to be the library for the French royalty, but then it was transformed after the French Revolution to become the National Library. I can't help but feel the influence of this academia, academic kind of trend that has been around for some time. It's been on TikTok quite heavily and it does have different branches. There's this classic academia, dark academia, academia, light academia, all these types of very niche trends within this already very niche trend. But the visuals associated with this and how TikToks are heavily associated with these visual narratives, I just can't help but look at fashion in this way. And throughout the show, there's gonna be a lot of this looking at these narratives in fashion, but this academia aesthetic, it, it's very heavily portrayed here. We have these ancient statues, these neoclassical paintings, hardcover books. There's this timeless appeal and with that are very specific clothing pieces that fuse both preppiness and neoclassical elements into one. We'll talk about this throughout the video, but this concept of narratives that we're seeing in TikTok, but also 2000s fashion and really creating our own narratives, our own stories, because that's kind of where we're at in fashion right now. And this theme of the library I thought was kind of an interesting one. And Vanessa Friedman in her article, she described it as creating a wardrobe library. And I think this is an appropriate way to look at what Eddie Slaman does at Celine. Another point worth mentioning is we have LCD sound system song, Too Much Love. This came out in 2005, bringing us back to this era. The songs that he picks are very important. I thought to look at this collection, I thought we'd take a look at 10 looks, 10 things that just stood out to me. As we look at this collection, it's really just a point of inspiration of how we may want to dress in 2024. So this first look I want to talk about, I kind of want to look for something like this this crochet silk dress. She's wearing a blazer on top. I definitely feel like we're gonna see high street brands dupe this. Another thing that I think is notable is these sort of slightly more square aviator sunglasses with the crystal triumph. I can see these being worn on Lisa. Someone like that is gonna make these sunglasses popular. This is an innovative way of dressing, but this is just a way at which we could potentially style a blazer, which isn't new at all. Look too, so we have this distressed leather jacket. If you you are somebody that wants to invest in a leather jacket, Celine is definitely a brand to consider. Eddie Slaman will always deliver. So there's a variety of different leather jackets in this collection. This is a distressed leather jacket and it has that very Parisian cut. It's a little bit worn in, but what it's paired with is this heart cutout bow tie top. Very cutesy. One thing I feel about Eddie Slaman Celine that is so different than I feel like Phoebe Philo Celine, there's something almost cutesy, maybe not cutesy is the right word, but very like sweet. But because it's Eddie Slamont Celine, there's also kind of this rock and roll at the base. It's that charming, sweet, flirty, but she also has a really cool music taste. Anyways, I liked this combination. Now these sunglasses, they honestly remind me of 2004. Like pretty sure I've seen Dior sunglasses pre-loved like that. This next look I wanna talk about here, we've got these leather headphones. Makes me think this is another luxury market opportunity. It's got this old Old school headphone look, but it's just also another way to have something branded. It's to me very much that girl going to the library or she's in between A to B. While luxury electronic accessories like phone cases are things that can become obsolete with changing phones, I do think headphones kind of have, I don't want to say like a more timeless appeal. There's a little bit more longevity. And I think with this collaboration with Master and Dynamic, I just did a basic Google search. I'm not too familiar with this, but it's a luxury headphone brand and 
that has partnered with other luxury brands. They've partnered with LV before, but I also think it's very on brand for the person that's a music lover, very on brand for Celine. And recently while I was scrolling on TikTok, one of the TikToks that came up was this one called Gen X Soft Club Aesthetic. And I was kind of fascinated by it. While this isn't that, these headphones kind of felt like it was in kind of that same kind of aesthetic universe. When I think of the indie electronica of LCD sound system, there's that. Back to this TikTok, they were talking about Gen X Soft Club. They were making reference to the use of this kind of technology. They brought up the Caperni CD player bag and how this Gen X Soft Club is kind of that techy, futuristic aesthetic that has branched out of Y2K. It's not that mick bling. It's more cooler colors. It's that nostalgia for technology during that period. Anyways, that's what these headphones somewhat reminded me of. Again, it's not quite that aesthetic, but it was just something that came up and I just wanted to talk about it. And then we're also seeing this kind of handbag shape that reminds me of the Gucci horse, but clutch, like this kind of ladder clutch. I don't know, it's not my favorite iteration of the Triumph bag. Definitely something we're seeing. I also think this glittering dress is super cute. It adds for that juxtaposition. We have these kind of Western-esque boots. They're not full-on cowboy boots. This next look I wanna talk about, it's just so 2004, but it's not a specific celebrity. It's not one specific person. Previous collections, it was very obvious. This was very Kate Moss or this was very Jane Birkin. This kind of is more vaguely reminding me of this era. I see a lot of Gen Zers thrifting a lot of items to sort of create this look. I think the styling, this is so interesting. We've got this super high neck crop top, very high neck, but then we've got this biker jacket. We've got this lowered waist, but longer flared jeans. And while for me personally, I don't think I can pull off that crop top, the way I've seen him do a lower waistline with this flared jean for the first time, it's making me reconsider consider getting maybe not like ultra ultra low rise but like a slightly lower rise i always thought i would be like a high rise girl maybe i'm just looking at tiktok more and i think what's very interesting is you see how it's ripped at the edges do you remember i remember 2004 2003 when the backs of your flared jeans would fray like that gave me memories but i'm also i've been there done that so this fifth look i want to talk about here this is not particular order we're seeing this leather tracksuit with the heels and also this pink and black just that color combination makes me think of 2004 2005 makes me think of those chanel cambon bags those like pink and black colors it's just vaguely this era the next look here again i feel like i can leave this in the past personally oh, definitely not my favorite but uh, i thought we'd mention it this trucker hat and this trucker jacket i remember having a trucker hat back in the day it was like 2003 and i just kind of want to forget about it this next series of looks i want to talk about is while we've got 2004 nostalgia going on here, we've also got minor upgrades to that quintessential Celine French minimal girl style. Think about the blazer, the shirt, the pants, the waistline pants are flared. This blazer, it's a very classic blazer. Got the striped shirt, very Parisian. These are all things that you'll be able to purchase at Celine that will fit seamlessly in almost anyone's wardrobe. Instead of maybe the striped shirt, you get the lacy cami or crochet cami. Also the belt buckle. It's a little bit more pronounced. I think this is kind of a trend we're seeing. Very defined belt buckles are something that we're seeing. Instead of the very minimal belts, very 2000s. Celine kind of like nails this French minimal style and he's been doing this since he's really started the brand. It's proven to be very successful and we'll kind of see every season that upgraded French minimal girl silhouette here. And while we're talking about this Parisian style, this is something I've heard a few people tell me. It is hearsay, alleged, etc. But when Eddie was asked by the Arnaud's to join Celine. They really wanted to rebrand Celine. I know Eddie gets a lot of flack for rebranding Celine, but the word is they actually wanted to change this brand. They wanted Celine to become a Parisian equivalent to what Ralph Lauren is to American fashion. Think about how Ralph Lauren has this very preppy Americana heritage style, but it's also very sporty and casual at the same time and wearable. The emphasis on separates to themes around sporting activities is felt in so many collections at Celine, including this library collection. And that is why there is this emphasis on separates, sportswear, and a strong Parisian identity. Of course, there is that rock and roll. You can't really take that away from Eddie Slaman, but I think he's heavily criticized for being very commercial, but that 
has always been the long-term game plan at Celine. And as much as I appreciate what Phoebe Philo did for Celine, creating a wardrobe for that modern multifaceted woman, it changed season to season versus the new Celine woman that LVMH wanted to create was something that was long-term. When you think about how Ralph Lauren has polo shirts, blazers, ball caps, jeans, Celine includes handbags, sunglasses, belts, other accessories. And honestly, there are plenty of women that really love this Parisian minimal style. You see it on social media and it's heavily felt. And when you go into stores, this is what they're heavily promoting. This was always the look LVMH wanted Celine to become under Eddie Slimane. And while I think there are hints of 2000s, biker, or even these Eddie Slimane-isms with the leather jackets that indie chic look, whatever the trend or theme of the time is, but it will always be rooted in this Parisian minimal brand that is rooted in sports Wear. Another theme that is very prominent in this collection is the theme of the tomboy. This is always something that he's talked about since his first run at YSL in the 90s to when he was at Dior and then YSL again and now he's at Celine. A lot of his earlier works explored this androgyny with gender. Again, this isn't a new idea. It's really not new. But you see how a lot of the looks on these models can look like they're for guys, girls. There's no gender. Sure, there are some very girly looks and and maybe some looks that are a little bit more boyish and sporty and some are more put together, some are more casual. But for instance, when I look at this model, right? Here they are wearing this tuxedo. Is it a guy or girl? It like really doesn't matter, right? And then we have that same model wearing this sparkly dress and then this furry coat. And then they're wearing the exact same kind of clunky shoes. This idea of clothing as being gender neutral. And he explored this heavily in his early days. Guys can wear things that girls can wear and vice versa. And that's why a lot of women actually back in the day really liked his menswear because they thought it was something women wanted to wear. And obviously that was something YSL did. Another kind of theme I wanna talk about with this look here, indie sleeves, is something we're always gonna see. We have these combat boots with this dress. He's been doing this pretty much everywhere he goes. But I think specifically continuing these boots because these look like the same boots that Gwyneth Paltrow wore during the courtroom looks. And those boots sold out obviously because everyone was talking about what she was wearing. I have low key, every time I've gone into sleeves, and I've wanted to try them on, but they're never in stock in my size, but I hear they run big. But yes, we also see how this model is wearing a tuxedo blazer, very YSL, but also you can wear those boots just the way Gwyneth Paltrow did in that kind of quiet luxury. You can wear this to a courtroom or you can be kind of girl going to a nightclub, right? And I also just want to highlight there are these really nice dresses, really lovely party dresses, dresses you can go out. It's very juxtaposed in this formal looking library. In conclusion, I kind of wanted to finish off and talk about how this collection really has this feeling of familiarity, something that has been very lived. There's this vague familiarity, or maybe this was something that we very vividly lived through. I remember living through this period, but these were looks I forgot about. That's why it's a 20 year trend cycle, because at this point we've all forgotten about a lot of these looks. But even if you didn't live through this time period, there's something vaguely familiar. I think it's just because be it the music, the movies, pop culture, celebrity culture, fashion, We've seen bits of it in the past, but because it's been some time, it's not as crystal clear. Now we're kind of revisiting the 2000s. And a lot of these brands are kind of doing this 2000s nostalgia and some in very obvious ways. I would even say fall, winter 2023 Celine, they were going back to this indie sleaze look, that specific time period. This fall collection was kind of like what people wore to concerts and the collection was about wanting people to go out and experience the world and close that you could wear to a party, a club. This, it feels a little less obvious, a little bit more vague, a little bit more hazy, but I also think this is kind of how fashion is feeling. Just going on TikTok, we're seeing a lot of these trend narratives, this influx of constant trends. And in this collection alone, we're obviously seeing the 2000s, but we're also seeing front chic, we're also seeing preppy, we're also seeing biker girl, we're seeing tomboy, we're seeing trucker, we're seeing these Ugg boots, the track suits, the tuxedos, there's a lot going on in this collection, but that was also kind of the 2000s. And when you think about how fashion really sped up in the 2000s, it was because of fast fashion in comparison to previous decades before that. Obviously, it's even more extreme now. The rise of H&M, Zara, Forever 21. With each decade, there are kind of these pivotal things that define fashion of that decade. When we think about the 2010s, Instagram selfies, outfit of the days, aesthetic timelines. And with this TikTok era, it's kind of bringing me back to 
to that feeling in the 2000s to that kind of eclectic period and where you can honestly be whatever you want fashion is very accessible you can be a combination of different things it's that juxtaposition that contrast that contradiction you can personalize it or you can conform to it i think that's what's so fascinating about tiktok how gen z approaches fashion you can kind of really concoct whatever narrative you want you can create your own story you can be your own character you can write your own book one day you can be strawberry girl the next day you can be latte girl you can be barbie core you can be office siren you can be a combination of all these things and you can pull from the past you can pull from your favorite throwback movie celebrity musician tv show you can be honestly as niche or as mainstream as you want to be and while i think there are valid critiques the way micro trends these nano trends through advertising, the promotion of overconsumption with fast fashion companies. But that's something we still saw on Instagram. We still see it on YouTube. How many ads of crappy quality products do you have to see to often like get to the actual content of a YouTube video, right? You see a lot of Shein hauls, these types of fast fashion companies that a lot of people argue are like a lot more problematic, but they have a huge presence on this platform. And I do feel like you can get overwhelmed, feel that overload on TikTok. Maybe this is just me as a millennial speaking. I don't know, maybe I just like to sit with something longer. I don't know, I just can't keep up. But one thing I do really admire about Gen Z is their ability to repurpose the past and like make it cool. And I'm obviously speaking very generally here. This isn't every single Gen Z person, just the way if I said people in the 2000s, not everyone in the 2000s, was doing this right but i'm just saying people that are following fashion this is something that is noticed not everyone is obviously doing this not every person is posting about latte girl or strawberry girl but it's just something that you are noticing with people that are interested in fashion one thing i do really like about tiktok is seeing how they like vintage or thrift items in a very cool way they've managed to make things that are very thrifted look very cool and i think you could argue that did exist prior like it definitely did but it is very prevalent now and i think it's because places like depop and just resale websites even just ebay there's just way more accessibility way more out there than there ever was with previous generations right their whole like businesses and people that kind of are able to curate collections of pre-loved vintage looks it's just so cool but i think what gen z also does adding another layer to this it's not just how they put looks together it's also how they kind of create these narratives or these stories with these looks and i think that's kind of what we're seeing here with eddie slaman and this library wardrobe you can approach fashion this way borrow from the past create your own narrative your own story and to further this point i found this interview where carl lagerfeld was being interviewed by ap in 2004 and he was describing eddie slaman's work and i think what he's describing also feels relevant to how we're seeing fashion now with tiktok and also this collection I think it's right for the moment. It's the concept of the new millennium spirit. It is what Armani did 20 years ago now, in a completely different way. It's much more French, with all kinds of influences from all kinds of periods, but totally modern, not retro, not flea market, nothing. It's a spirit, a mood, a richness, a shine, a brilliance, but you think it comes from somewhere but in fact it comes from nowhere and this exact feeling of repurposing the past as carl says in this very french way in a way that feels very shiny and new and you think it comes from something but it comes from nowhere or at least you don't know exactly where it comes from it's that vague familiarity that Eddie Slaman often plays with in his collections. And of course, what is being offered at Celine, it's not gonna be affordable. It's gonna be that very expensive Parisian chic vision of this. And while it's very expensive, I think like the core concept of creating your own narrative around your looks, be it these combat boots that can be worn at a courtroom or these combat boots that you can wear to a nightclub. And you can wear your glittering dress with a casual jacket or headphones. And one other concept while we're talking about TikTok here that I think Gen Z does so well is that wrong shoe concept. And if you haven't heard of it, it's a concept that TikToker Alison Bornstein, definitely check her out. She's a celebrity stylist. It's basically you wearing what you wanna wear, but instead of going for the obvious 
a shoe, go with something different. Don't wear that typical shoe. If you wanna wear, say like a suit, wearing loafers would be the obvious choice, but maybe try flip flops instead. Cue in the row here, right? Don't wear the obvious shoe with the outfit. And I think this kind of idea of the wrong shoe, the wrong jacket, the wrong handbag, the wrong pants, it's kind of felt throughout this whole collection. Wear that party dress with that bomber jacket and it's okay. And it looks so much more interesting because clearly this is something that this person actually wears. It's more personal and true to them, but it adds that element of surprise, that element of something different. And then you can create your own narrative around that. But that TikTok styling, I think adds just another layer. That's kind of the fun thing about fashion. It's about creating your own story. And honestly, I think that's what this collection is doing. Anyways, that is my video. Would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me in another one. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.